Yo, what's going on guys? Today we are talking about the brand new MacBook Pros. If you're anyone like myself, you couldn't sleep too much last night because you were anticipating this Apple event so much. And I don't think I've ever been this excited for an Apple event. And man, they really delivered this time. Now I'll just tell you right up front in this video, I went ahead and ordered the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M1 Max chip. And I'll kind of dive a little bit more into that, my different configurations and the specs that I ordered and why I chose the 14 inch over the 16 inch MacBook Pro but I wanted to kind of dive into all the different specs and the things that are really kind of the standout features to me in my opinion and why I'm so excited for these computers and why I think this is going to make the MacBook Pro the computer for creatives again. And also if you guys are as stoked about these new MacBooks as I am, make sure you drop this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well because mine is going to get delivered next week, October 26th, the first day of delivery. I somehow got in on the first batch. So definitely going to be some more content around this new MacBook coming very, very soon to the channel. And you guys don't wanna miss it. All right, so let's talk about some of my favorite key features and specs of these new computers because they are definitely worthy to talk about here for a second. So these chips are insane, right? Which for the first time in a while, we see a lot of different specs and configurations that you can order. But basically with the success of the M1 chip that Apple came out with, which was honestly a game changer. So obviously Apple very smartly added on to the M1 chips. So we have the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, which is kind of weird names to get used to, but now it's starting to make a little bit more sense now that I've said it a few times. And I feel like it's kind of hard to grasp the actual power of these chips so far. We're definitely gonna have to see some tests from people out there, but I feel like a lot of us, at least that I know, uh, went for the M1 Max chip over the M1 Pro chip, even though I think the Pro is gonna be plenty powerful enough for most people out there, because the M1 chip is probably powerful enough for most people out there, and the M1 Pro chip is more powerful than that. And then the M1 Max chip is just on a whole different planet of power. But I feel like any of us that have ordered MacBooks in the past 10 years, we're used to, if you do video or photo work, or honestly, any other creative work, you kind of just have to max out the specs of your MacBook Pro. And usually in the past, that has been the right move. So I'm gonna be transparent. I feel like not a lot of people are saying this right now. It's kind of hard to know if you should go for the M1 Pro or the M1 Max. But honestly, for myself, I decided to go the Max route just because obviously I do do some heavy 4K footage editing. I also am involved with photo shoots with hundreds or thousands of large megapixel photos. So to me, it's worth paying that extra amount to get the M1 Max chip just so I don't have any hesitation or any regrets further down the line because this I think is gonna be my computer for the next foreseeable future. So let's talk about the redesign of the physical computer itself, right? Again, us power users want, you know, not a huge clunky and chunky computer to take around with us, but really our priority is portable power. And I feel like they really hit the nail on the head with this computer. And the bottom chassis looks thick, but not way too thick. And then the top, you know, um, screen here looks crazy thin on the new computers. So even though they do seem a bit beefy, that is absolutely no problem for me. And I would way, way, way prefer that if that means better battery life and more performance. So I am totally fine with just how the new redesign looks. Now, obviously along with that redesign, we have the ports that came back with the computer, which I for one am so excited about. I think Apple sometimes can be super stubborn when you're talking about mistakes. And I know what they were trying to do with the USB-C ports, but dongle life is just kind of not the life for me or honestly for most people out there. So the fact that we're getting the MagSafe charger back, which is awesome because we all know we trip over cords sometimes and that magnetic sound is just oh so satisfying. But also we get the HDMI port back and then a personal fan favorite for me is we get that SD card slot back as well, which I use every single day. So the fact that I'm gonna be able to use my MacBook Pro with honestly out dongles pretty much most of the time is just an overall huge W. Oh, and also a super nice touch by Apple with that MagSafe charger is the fact that it's going to be able to be fast charging. So you get 50% battery in a 30 minute charge, which is just insane. Now more in this redesign is that they got rid of the touch bar. And again, I think this goes back to creators and the power users that I think the MacBook Pro is really meant for. I would say 19 out of 20 people I know dislike the touch bar and honestly probably never use it. it just seems like they're listening to the things that us creators really want and what's really important to us. Okay, now we have to address the notch because for some reason this is a topic with Apple products. I don't really 
understand why people think this computer shouldn't have a notch. I like that they kind of added the extra real estate on either side of the web camera, which before it was just a black bar. So I would much rather have a small notch and have that extra screen real estate for, you know, just the other info that your computer usually has, like the battery time, everything like that. And I personally am one that uses the webcam sometimes. So the fact that they updated that to a 1080p camera is a really nice touch. And also I personally don't mind the notch at all because uh, I don't know, if you didn't have a notch, you just wouldn't have a front camera if the display just goes edge to edge the entire thing. So unless you want um, an invisible camera or no camera, there's gonna be a notch. Now, while we're on the topic of the display, the fact that this is gonna have the ProMotion 120 Hertz, and even more than that, it's smart. So if you're doing tasks or things where it doesn't need to use that entire 120 Hertz, it actually slows it down, similar to the new iPhone 13 Pro Max is in these iPhones right here, it kind of adjusts to whatever you're doing, which again, saves battery life. And now that I have started using devices with 120 Hertz is really nice. And I think that is gonna be the future moving forward. Now, one of my favorite things, which I feel like I keep saying that throughout this entire video, my favorite thing about this, but honestly, this is, pretty damn close to a dream computer for me. But I love the fact that they made the 14 inch option and the 16 inch option essentially the same for powers and spec. Usually when we're talking Apple in the past, whether it's the MacBook Pros, you'd usually have to kind of spec out the 16 inch or the larger computer to get the more powerful machine. And I feel like the success of the M1 13 inch MacBook Pros kind of changed that philosophy for Apple. So someone like myself, and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there as well, if you are in this creative space, you've always just kind of gone for the larger MacBook Pros. I know that's how I am ever since I got my first one back in like 2008 or 2009. But when I decided to upgrade to the M1 chip, the 13 inch MacBook Pro is my only option. And once I got this computer, computer in front of me, it definitely changed my entire mind because I'm someone who's on the go consistently. So the fact that this computer is smaller, it's lighter weight, and it's just way more portable. It fits in my camera bag better. It fits in just my everyday backpack better. So I was actually kind of nervous because I've kind of gotten used to the 13 inch size of the M1 MacBook Pro. I didn't really want to go up to the 16 inch size. And I know I'm not the only one that feels the same. So I absolutely love that they made it possible to kind of choose 14 inch or 16 inch. And really you're just choosing a little bit different in battery life and then just the screen size itself. As far as the internals and the power goes, you are exactly the same. And that is just an awesome, awesome thing that Apple decided to do. Now, I personally think the price is right on par with MacBooks in the past. If you ask anyone out there that is, you know, in this field, in the past, they would get a spec'd out 16 inch MacBook Pro and easily you're spending anywhere between three and I would say five grand. Like that's just kind of what the normal was for a high end, very powerful MacBook Pro. So to me, and we'll kind of see more and more as tests come out and more people just kind of try out these different computers and the different chips and the different configurations, I still think the M1 Pro is gonna be plenty for a lot of people out there. And the price for that is super reasonable for a high-end, high-performance MacBook Pro. Obviously with the M1 Max chip, you're kind of entering a higher tier of price, but also a higher tier of performance that definitely not everybody out there needs, but I think a lot of us are going to order. But also for myself, if this is going to be my main workhorse, for my YouTube content, freelance work, or maybe your own production company, whatever it is. If you're talking a few hundred dollars over the course of you know one or two years where you're making a lot of money using this machine, to me, it's not really much of a choice. I would just go for the higher end MacBook Pros, but maybe that's just myself and my past experience and just my current situation. So take that for what you will. And I definitely recommend you guys to really kind of think this through and maybe wait to see some tests and see what other people order before you figure out your own configuration. And like I said, I'm definitely going to be testing mine out and reviewing it as much as possible once I get it in my hands. So before this video gets crazy long, let me tell you guys what the specs are of the computer that I ordered for myself. I basically went for the 14 inch MacBook Pro fully spec'd out other than the SSD. So I got the 14 MacBook Pro in space gray, obviously. I got the Apple M1 Max chip that has the 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, 16 core neural engine, two terabytes of SSD storage, and then the 64 gigs of the memory. So that's the configuration that I chose to get for myself. And I'm honestly really happy with it. I think the performance out of this computer is going to just be insane. And because of that performance that I expect, I don't really mind paying the price points that I'm getting with this computer. Oh, and also 
if you guys have never done the Apple trade-in program before either, I'm trading in my 13 inch MacBook Pro that I bought, let's see, like about a year ago now. And I think it was what, 1200 bucks, 1300 bucks? And I'm getting 880 bucks trading it in on Apple's website towards the new MacBook Pro. So I got a full year's use out of this computer for like what, a $400 loss. So again, that helped out my decision even more when I decided to get the M1 Max just kind of decked out 14 inch MacBook Pro and man, <laughs> I am so excited to get this computer. Now, as I was saying, I feel like this new refresh of these MacBook Pros is really making the MacBook for creators again. And here's kind of what I mean by that. So way back in like 2008 to like 2012, I would say, the MacBook kind of stood out amongst other brands out there whenever you were talking about creators and creatives, whether you're talking about designers, videographers, photographers, honestly, any corporate America company that you walked into, any photo shoot, any movie set, any person that was touching creative work, Honestly, I would say 99% of the time was working off of a MacBook Pro. And honestly, that's pretty much still how it is today. And actually right here, I have a very early one of my MacBook Pros. I think this one was from 2012. This thing is covered in stickers. This like toured across the country with me when I was doing stuff with bands and doing warp Tour and stuff like that. So this one definitely holds a special place in my heart. But this was the era of the MacBook Pro that kind of set this apart from the rest of the industry. And I feel like after that, around like maybe 2015 or so, Apple really started to kind of streamline these MacBook Pros for the masses, not just creators and creatives out there. So they started taking away the ports, they started adding some other features like the touch bar, they started trying to make the computer as light and thin as possible. Which to the normal person out there, yes, those are all really nice features, but for the power users that are, you know, photographers, videographers, graphic designers, stuff like that, we don't care if the computer is a little bit heavier or a little bit beefier if it's way more powerful. And so that is why these brand new MacBook Pros that just came out has me so excited is I feel like Apple really listen to what the creators want. And this is just such a game changer for all of us out there. So yeah, guys, that is really it for my kind of first impressions and reactions to these brand new MacBook Pros. I personally am someone that is so excited to get my hands on this computer. There's something that's always been a little bit magical to me about buying a MacBook Pro. It's something that honestly can start an entire business. It can run an entire business. And it's a machine that you kind of use throughout your story of whatever it is, growing your career, growing your business, or maybe just making some content for fun. And that's kind of just the magical thing about Apple and the magical thing about the MacBook Pro. So guys, let me know down in the comments below if you guys decide to order a MacBook Pro for yourself and what configuration you got for yourself. I will definitely be down in the comments below responding to everybody. I am just so stoked about this computer. I can't wait to hear everyone's thoughts on it. And next week we dive into the physical computer itself once it's delivered and I am all over that thing. So guys, that's gonna be it for me in today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, be sure to drop this video a thumbs up. As I mentioned, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel because you don't want to miss any future content on these new MacBook Pros. And definitely let me know what you guys want to see in the future videos. But guys, it is getting late and I got to edit this video before I go to sleep. At least that's the plan. But I appreciate you guys sticking around and watching this video and I will catch you in the next one very, very soon. Peace, guys.